long time, like when I was studying in London and I was starting to dive a bit and uh, it, it felt so comfortable. It made so much sense, like everything down there is a, it's a different world and uh, it, it was a way, it's a way, you know, to, I don't know, to work on the mood. The moment you just boom, go down below, it's, that's it. And you're not tired, you're not, you're not yourself anymore somehow. And especially I love doing stuff underwater because you have a, a relationship with objects that's totally different than on land. And that's always fun. So it's called Disoriented, which is a, a story of a seed migration and especially coconut migration. When you have a very small, uh, barren island in the middle of the Pacific, just a pile of sand and this coconut tree, like the postcard thing, they arrive there just uh, drifting. Like the coconut falls in the water, it can drift many months on sea, lands on a piece of uh, sand and grows. And I, I love that story. So basically we, we expanded that story in a world where all the small atoll is sinking because the sea levels are rising. We imagine that plant sort of growing but inside the water. So we wanted sort of a chaotic uh, landing of um, lost uh, palm trees. So I just came back, I saw this cowboy hat and I have to say it's amazing. It's a very unusual experience. Because it's a completely different world out there and uh, you just swim between the sculptures and uh, have this feeling of underwater world. And in the beginning you just swim, swim, swim and there's nothing on the rocks in the sea and then suddenly you see these creatures and you can't understand from the first side what it is. But yeah, it's mind blowing. So. Finally here in this amazing island, we are going to visit the artists and this is where the artist lives and partly works as well. Her name is Autumn's local Belle. She said that her house is going to look a little bit the best. Hello, Hi. Tom. Hi, Lena. How are you? Good. Come in. Thank you. Have you been to Greece before? No, I haven't. This is first time. Okay, so these are the very traditional uh, Greek colors. So it's a super old house that was abandoned for uh, abandoned for about uh, ten years, I think. Like no one was living here, and we were lucky enough to live nearby and found the owners. So since I'm 16, we live in so many places, like uh, every two years we would move. Right. And this is the first time ever we have a place we actually want to stay in and uh, build something. So it was finally worth putting the effort. This is the, um, I mean, it was, the, it was a large installation called Ototomy, which is, um, Ototomy is a weird word. It's actually a biological like um, movement of, uh, how do you say? Crab, crabs. So the crab, when attacked by um, a predator, like intuitively, it would cut its own arm. Oh. It's like if suddenly you want to grab me and yeah. I'm able, like my body is able to sh like detach my arm. So it's yeah. really cool. And we imagine kind of uh, small houses, small uh, like fishermen, you know, like wood house on the water, but built in a segmented manner as if they could move and escape and, you know, be more organic in a way. This was actually like one of the first, uh, the first work we did in 2013. The name was uh, Posidonia. Poseidon, yeah. yes, is yeah. the god of the sea. And from his name came the name of uh, a plant, the, a marine species called Posidonia. And you can find them a lot. It's kind of the seaweed of the Mediterranean. And it's, it's those really simple stripes. They really look like they are cut out. So we use the same shape and made out of uh, pollution, like uh, found plastic, and re uh, put them on different uh, everyday like objects. So this is actually a plate and a bowl, but the way it turned in the water. 
looks a bit like jellyfish. You know? Yeah, because turtle they eat jellyfish, because and that's why they actually eat a lot of plastic because plastic has a very similar visual consistent as jellyfish. Right. So this is from the same uh, series called mm -hmm. uh, Smotilla. Corse uh, is an island in the yeah. south of France and we went to do a residency there and we made that work there from uh, like the, the facade of uh, a church. So this is the roof and the arch and the, it was the door. <laughs> At a certain point I didn't want to include uh, human beings in the work. I really wanted it the work to be uh, object-based. Can I say that you didn't want to include humans because of what they've done to the nature? It was in a way like you were upset. <laughs> well, they, they didn't deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a cool way. Honestly, I don't know. So I guess there is a form of guilt linked to environmental change. Oh, wow. So it's, it's maybe that guilt that made me uh, work a bit away like so maybe you're right like uh, now maybe i'm dealing with this guilt and i'm ready to kind of uh, step back in the action and start uh, be being a part of the sculpture okay maybe i'll show you the workshop now okay let's go so that's the studio area where we can where we get distracted watching people doing paddling or windsurfing <laughs> makes it really hard to work <laughs> sometimes so now we're working on a project for a photography festival right, called the Photo Pub. It's going to be installed in a swimming pool, mm. like a kid's right. swimming pool. So we're really uh, one, like, curious about how this project is going gonna, is gonna to turn out. But I think it's going to be fun, like uh, really playful. Okay. So it's a sinking um, cuisine. And this is the crazy flying machine I can't wait to try. And this is Mathieu. Hello, Mathieu. <laughs> How are you? Good. So, yeah. Mathieu is my partner, like I was uh, telling you uh, earlier. So we've been working together for about five years now. Oh, yeah. And on those projects. So he's, um, what do you say? The, he's an engineer, like he's a mechanical engineer. Okay. And he works aboard a very large ship for the merchant navy. So he can build almost anything, so we're really That's trying good. Good to... good for you. <laughs> exactly. Basically, we're working together with uh, Hortense and she does the sketches at the beginning. She has some idea and then she asks me how to realize them. What kind of material should we use, what kind of techniques we can use and everything. And depending on what we want uh, as a result, we try to adapt and find some uh, solutions for the problem she wants to solve. It depends on how many times we will, we will leave the sculpture underwater. The, um, if it's for a long time, we prefer to use like wood, paper, uh, something that are not uh, damaged to the environment or, or anything. On the other hand, when we have uh, the flying machine, we can use uh, copper because it's more durable material, it's resistant and uh, we know we'll use it, uh, dive the machine only the, the time we dive ourselves. The machine won't stay under the water for, for a while. Between what uh, Hortense imagined, what she uh, draw and what the finish will look like, it's different world, you know, it's right. not, not really predictable. Some things uh, we uh, thought won't look like anything under water was, uh, they were uh, yeah, really nice and uh, we are really happy of what we did and something you put a lot of effort, a lot of time into it and you're sure it's going to work and they don't. If I could see you again, I don't know where to start. I've tried to fix every wound with this long heart. Shatter mine, I will be defeated. But if I go back well, we, we, we sail, we, we live on the water a lot, and we feel it's important that the sea is perceived uh, differently because it's a, it's a huge, massive space that no one has uh, fully explored. We keep on forgetting that below the surface is this huge uh, ecosystem that is actually sustaining our way of living on land. And the moment that ecosystem will collapse, and it is already collapsing, then we, we cannot live the way we do anymore. And so we're trying to uh, portray that world 
uh, in between the Disneyland, World of Nemo, like a joyful, endless fish life, uh, you know, the kind of National Geographic, wow, world. And in between also the disastrous uh, oil spill or like the, the, the tragic and the, and the fake. And that's why we put objects underwater, because it's not only about human presence, it's about what we make. I know you here, I just can't surrender. I just can't surrender. I just can't surrender. I just can't surrender. I just can't surrender.